Hey everybody, welcome to the newest and greatest episode of Rider Club Radio. I'm your host, Jeff. And I'm Liam, and this is the, the best episode of all time, is that what you just said? It's a really low bar that I'm hoping that we <laughs> can jump over now that I've said that. But if not, eh, who the fuck cares? I wonder what our best episode is. Uh, write in and tell us. Write in I'm, if you recently marathoned them and you have one that sticks out. I'm really excited to hear all the really mean-spirited joke responses we're going to get <laughs> on that one. Uh, this week, we watched Common Rider x Aid episode 44 and... Uh, Chojin Sentai Jetman episodes 11 and 12. And also I watched um, fucking Return of the Beast Rider Squad. Oh, I didn't Remember? watch that. It's, no, don't watch it. I just want to talk a little bit about it. <laughs> don't watch it. Don't watch okay. it. <laughs> I think I could probably figure how you feel about it. <laughs> That's my review, but I have some things I'd like to say about that later. Uh, but first, why don't you tell us what happened on x Aid this week? Okay. So, as we saw last week... Everyone's bugsters. No one can deal with it. Everyone, and apparently anybody they touch turns into bugsters. So everyone's getting tackled to the ground and getting turned into bugsters. The news lady Everybody's gets, getting turned into a turkey head. Everyone's getting turned into a turkey head. The news lady gets turned into a bugster. Uh, everyone's trying to deal with it, but they can't, they can't just kill them because they're people. So everyone's fighting, and then Gen moves off to the side fighting, and then this yeah. mysterious new rider shows up. Common rider build. And he's like, uh, you're X-8. I'm going to take your essence so I can put it in a bottle and... Uh, Dan's like, wait, what? Dan's like, wait, aren't you only supposed to show up in the movie? What the fuck are you doing in the show? Are we doing this every show now? Bill beats the tar out of him. And kills after... Him. He kills him. And then he's he Dan comes back with his extra life. And Bill's like, oh, you're not the guy. You're not x Aid. Sorry, I'll leave. And he ditches. And he's Dan's like, like, oh, if I would have killed x Aid, he would have stayed dead. So I know <laughs> you're not the real one. I'm here to kill X8 and, and put him inside of a bottle to crush his remains into the space of like two square inches. I guess. I guess that's what he was there to do. <laughs> I guess we'll find out in the movie. Watch our movie. Watch our movie. Please be gets excited. The, gets the X8 bottle. I don't know. So Dan's confused and, and Bill fucks off. And uh, so everyone's everyone's a bugster and uh, Emu's like, ah, I can I can just use Mighty Doctor X, Doctor Mighty. And, but it only works on one person at a time, so it's not going to work. Poppy says, I can do it. I'm a bugster. Uh, I can just jam this into me and cure everybody, which I thought was interesting because it's, it's like a little callback to... Remember when Drago Knight Hunter first appeared and mm. Graphite shoves it into himself and infects a whole bunch of people? No. You don't, don't remember, remember that? that at all. That's, that was the ticking clock for Drago Knight Hunter is he sticks, he sticks the thing to himself and infects a bunch of people. Uh, Poppy's like, I can, since I'm a bugster, and we can do that, I can stick this thing into myself and cure everyone. Okay, so it wasn't as big of an ass pull as I was thinking. No. Okay. Unless I'm misremembering the graphite part, but I'm pretty sure he does that. He sticks it into himself, and I he's like, it. yeah, I got proto, proto Dragonite Hunter, and it makes him so strong that he's the Arca villain, and it makes a bunch of people sick. I'm pretty sure. I'm 90% um, sure. It sounds familiar, so I'll believe it. Sure. Fuck it. That's bullshit, but I believe it. Um... <laughs> So Poppy does that. She, like, disperses herself over Tokyo and saves everyone. And it's like, goodbye, everyone. You've been such great friends to me. And there's a little, like, little music video vignette. Schmaltzy bullshit. Yeah, there's a little music video <laughs> vignette of all the best Poppy times, all the best Poppy moments throughout the series. All one of them. And uh, everyone's like, oh, fucking God. R.I. Peepo Popo. <laughs> Rest in Papa Peepo. What a... What a what a beautiful soul Poppy was as she fades from existence to save us all, and uh, so everyone's everyone saved. That's done, but there's still the matter of Game Deus, Game Deus Cronus to take care of. So mm-hmm. everyone meets up in the park to fight Game Deus Cronus, and he says, "Fuck you guys, you can't beat me because we're fused, and I'll beat you up." And Emu shows up, and he says, "Guys, uh, we can just go level one to separate the bugster from the patient." And everyone goes, "Oh my God, he's right." And somebody says, well, what about levels? And then somebody else goes, ha, 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 ha. And then they go ahead and fight him as level one, and it works. <laughs> level, sorry, level? Sorry, levels? What? What is that? So they, they kick the shit out of them. They separate the two of them. And Parrot sacrifices himself to blow up uh, Game Deus. So there's just Cronus left. A lot and of it, genocide in Kamen Rider lately. Yeah, I mean. A lot of genocide. It's cool. It's cool these days. It's, Liam it's, is down with genocide, everybody. It's reversible genocide, where everything's okay at the end of the day, but it looks like genocide at first. What was reversible about the fucking roid mutes getting genocided? 
Oh, oh, genocide of the... Okay, I thought you meant yeah, the bad no. guys doing the genocide of the humans. Wow. No, 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 yes, no. I'll, no. <laughs> it's a lot of genocide in Kamen Rider lately. Juoger, this ain't. The weird race is not going to survive. They're all going to die. Nope. No, for sure. So Parrot sacrifices himself to kill Game Deus, and everything seems great, and then Cronus is like, wait a minute, Parrot's gone, Emu can't transform, no one can stop the time stop. I win! Fuck you guys! Wait, wait. Was... speaking of wait a minute, what? Build shows up in this episode. Yeah. Build lives in a fantasy Japan that's split into three separate regions where people live in different, like, societies. What the fuck?! Please buy a build driver. Oh my god. How is... What? What? <laughs> well, He's there because watch our show. Whatever, He's I guess. The, it's, it, that's what they always do. It's a commercial. I thought it was kind of clever that uh, it was Genmu that got caught up in it. Because it was he Genmu was the that, one jumped that in the yeah. go- uh, He jumped in the ghost and fucked everything up. He It's reversed now. It's all switched around on him. I thought it was stupid. <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> toy commercial stuff. Yeah. When you watch Kamen Rider... You have to deal with toy commercial stuff. That's fine. It happens. It doesn't make any sense. It makes less sense, like a lot less sense, than any of the other one of these. Yeah, I guess, like, with x you could say, oh, ghost happened, but just no one talks about it for some reason. Nobody talks about everyone turning into ghost data and going into a guy's back. No, that's just, it's, everyone was so embarrassed about it, they just don't mention it ever again. <laughs> Nobody mentions everybody a year earlier turning into computer data. <laughs> Nobody remembers any of that shit. That that Hellheim stuff, no one no. talks about it. It's just remember this... when America was nuked off the face of the planet. Nobody really <laughs> mentions that anymore. That's, that's why Go came back. <laughs> he got nuked. He was like, "Whoa, I better leave here." The only survivor in America was Doctor Harley. <laughs> he was the only one. You just can't explain this shit. Nope. There's no lining any of this shit up. I will say. That I really, really liked this episode. Really? I thoroughly enjoyed it. Just because of all the stuff that came back around. Um, I feel like Poppy and Parrot's sacrifices are completely toothless. They were very quick. Because of how quick they were, how in rapid succession they were, and the fact that characters have been brought back every time they've died so far. Except Lovelika, because who the fuck cares? And also, they're in the end thing. The movie, the final episode movie, whatever it's called, I which bet is you canon. Dollars to donuts that they're gonna be revived just in that movie. Probably, I think, I think in the show they're done. Probably, I don't like hate this this episode or anything. I don't want to put that out there. It's a pretty all right episode. It's just those deaths were so completely non impactful that it bugged the shit out of me. I liked I liked Poppy's not because I thought it was emotional because fuck Poppy. But I just like that that, that callback. I, I wish they had actually mentioned it. But that, like, oh, yeah, uh, Bugsters can just jam Gashats into themselves and get the ability. Remember that one time it happened? Uh, I thought that was really cool. I thought uh, x aid being like, wait a minute, we can just, we'll separate the Bugster from the guy with level See, one. See, I thought that was cool. I thought that I thought was, that was, that was a really great callback. And there I was... liked Poppy saying goodbye to Dan, even. I thought that was kind of nice, because they established that they had kind of a special relationship, mm-hmm. since he built her out of his mother's dead soul or whatever. And a little development showing through there. They haven't forgotten, which is good. No, but um, the rest of the episode was just a lot of fluff nonsense, really. It was, it was a lot of fights. A lot of big fights as we get yeah. to the end of X-Aid. Um, a lot of bad CGI. Oh I like the look of... I like the look of Game Deus when he's fused. I thought that was a really like Eldritch Abomination kind of look. Mm. Um, not not a big fan of the CGI level ones popping and hopping and bopping around. <laughs> what I liked about that scene is there's another callback in that scene, a little visual callback to episode one. Remember when X8 first transforms and he's fighting the big meatball monster and he's facing it and it looks like they're about to fight and then he turns around and runs. Exact yeah, same thing again. in this episode. Yeah, I love that. They're, 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 they're bringing it all around for the big finale. There is a lot of callback, and I appreciate that. I mm. I, you definitely liked this episode more than I did, but Probably. I still liked it all right. Yeah. it's. Uh, I just feel like it's unfortunate that a character's death has that little impact on the audience. Well, the thing I'm with- sure there were people who were like bawling, tearing up when... 
Poppy died, mm. but I defy you to show me one person that saw Parrot die and had the emotional fortitude at that moment to feel something about it. <laughs> the thing is, when Poppy died, the second Poppy died, I was like, when's Parrot going to die? It's going to be this episode yeah. or the next one. He's going to die, oh, yeah. though. Cause Bo- it would have been much more impactful if he died next episode, though. Mm-hmm. Not only was it... It had no impact on me because he died this episode. It ruined any impact that poppy had dying like that kuroto scene her and dan was actually a little bit emotional i mm-hmm. was like man that's really good they did that really well mm-hmm. and then uh parod got killed and i was like damn they're really just firing these off rapid fire aren't they <laughs> this is the episode where we get rid of the bugsters they're, they're there's only two now. bugsters left we have no time only 45 episodes there are only two bugsters left now it's uh dan and uh kiria yeah i guess they're bugsters do they count as bugsters yeah they're bugsters do they age can they live as normal humans after this i would imagine not they're going to completely gloss that over i would imagine Uh, they're just just gonna pretend that never happened and just treat them like people i don't know maybe dan will sacrifice himself I could see in the that. last episode. I could see him, but another he does only have three lives left. A third tearful sacrifice, though. Yes, maybe he'll. They did end. two in a row in this episode. <laughs> I could see them ending with him having one life, and then being like, "Now I will live as a human with one with my one life." And I understand the value of life now because I got one left, only one to live. I could see them doing that as well. I could see that angle. Uh, have no fucking clue what they're gonna do with Kyria. So, I don't he's, know. He is... Um, he's a data man. He's data man. I guess He points, only has one life. Points for not being predictable, x Good on you. I don't know what they're gonna maybe do. Maybe he'll sacrifice period. himself, too. Maybe he'll... Maybe they'll both... They'll both just kill themselves sometime. Maybe the everyone the in the show will sacrifice themselves tearfully in the last episode except Emu. Yeah, it's definitely gonna happen. That's what, that's what it's gonna be? Every single person. I don't know. I I feel like I'm being a a big old bitch, which isn't anything new, I guess. No, but... I get like a tearful a sacrifice of a character is a delicate thing, and it can be done very well, and it can be done very not well. And these ones aren't super great. Like I said, Poppy's was okay. Yeah, Poppy's uh, was decent. Parrots is a little rapid fire. Yeah, a little, a little I feel rapid like fire. I don't know. I feel like what should have happened i guess is that he sacrifices himself next episode mm-hmm. and they stop game Deus completely and then Cronus tries to transform but he can't because the game's over yeah that would be and nice no ending. one can transform anymore he, he'd like have a little scene where he pathetically tries to transform and then the next one would be like the fbi takes him and it yeah like, good that that's over we're done yeah, he, that would have been a really justice. great ending for him. Yeah. Because he's so obsessed with the power and control, and now he's got none anymore. Yeah. That'd be, it'd be, it'd be a little poetic. Poetic, yeah. It feels like X8 has a lot of those, uh, you know, the stru- the basic structure of a story where it's like, the it's the dip. It, the, it starts out at one point, and it dips down to its lowest point, and then it moves back up for the climax. The man in the hole, yeah. Yeah. Uh, X8 is like a roller coaster with that, where they go up a little bit and then down again. Like, <laughs> X8 is the man who keeps falling in holes. And yeah. doesn't understand why. It's That would have been like a great climax that Pear had sacrificed himself in order to defeat Game Deus after they'd all used their final attacks on it. Mm. Uh, but now we're in the hole again because we can't use Muteki. I guess, like, props for. Coming up with new problems to keep things uh, oh, yeah. dire. But you ha- they've come up with new problems like every couple episodes for the past ten episodes. Yeah, just keep keep a problem going. Here's the thing that I'm scared of more than anything. Is sure. in episode 45, the final episode, uh, Emu is going to get his ability to transform back by believing really hard. That's what I'm, I'm so scared of that. Or like well, of course that's what's going to happen. <laughs> realizing that the power was in his heart all along. And then he... Um, he uh, I'm what terrified. if what if he realized that Parod was always a part of him, and just because he's gone doesn't mean that he's not a part of him anymore, and that's how he transforms. Mm, that's still a little bit of that's corny as fuck, but it's corny. not as bad. <laughs> uh, I like if Takeru came 
and gave him reassurance that gave him the confidence to transform. That's how why, I'd like it why to doesn't, go. Why doesn't Takeru just come and take his belt and transform into Muteki automatically because he's so perfect? Because he's so good, and everyone just watches. He does it himself, and everyone just watches and goes, God, he's so amazing, <laughs> Takeru. That's how every common writer is going to end from now on. Takeru shows up, uses the main character's <laughs> power effortlessly... Effortlessly. Unlike how you said that word, he uses it effortlessly. Effortlessly. <laughs> and uh, a lot of effort for that word, <laughs> ironically. Um, I, don't, I give this episode like a C- minus or a D plus. I would give it a solid A-, minus. really. I'd say it's great with some flaws. I just feel like there wasn't enough meat in the sandwich... There's like a lot of well, maybe fight I'm a scenes vegetarian, that, Jeff. There's a lot of fight scenes. It's like condiments, right? Mm. But uh, plot-wise, two characters off themselves, and it doesn't really. I mean, it fixes the problem that was introduced last episode, mm. which is again my only complaint with X8. I love everything about this show, except that they introduce a problem and then solve it in the next episode. They 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 jump between plot points very fast. Yeah. Yeah. And now um, we're at a new problem that is going to be solved in one episode. C minus or C? I'll, I'll give it a solid A minus. I, I thoroughly minus. enjoyed it. It had some drama. It had clever callbacks. Uh, Build's cameo was a little dumb, but I like his visuals for how he moves. Yeah, the build cameo in my sandwich metaphor is like a whole cucumber that somebody <laughs> just put in the middle <laughs> of the sandwich. Not sliced or anything, just put no, a cucumber just a in there. whole cucumber. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta eat it. Fuck you. Here's your, here's your pickle. You can't take it off, <laughs> asshole. Eat your sandwich. <laughs> Eat your hamburgers, Apollo. Um, fuck off. Hey, <laughs> why don't we hear about the news? I hear you got a million stories I this have time. actually like one story and one non-story. It's very fast. Well. Okay, so uh, there was a... Toei released some new information about Build. More importantly, about its writing style. Mm-hmm. And how it's going to be told. Like how the story's going to be told. How here's is a, that? Here's a quote. That they talked about. They said the series is going to push like a classic common writer feel more than most other shows. In the past, really, this this is what they say. In the past few years, we were this translation is um, this translation was provided by Tokusatsu Network. So this is their take. In the past few years, we were told common writer isn't even common writer anymore. But even if it doesn't have the looks of common writer, common writer always has the same common point of originating from the same point together with evil. Like coming from where the like having villainous yeah, origins. The connection. Common yeah. Rider Build is a series pushing the common riderness. As Build will become the nineteenth Heisei Rider series, the system and the settings can also be considered as a right on point common rider series by taking all the good parts. I don't know what exactly they mean by that. I don't last know part, what that means. But, but they, they're I, taking it, it back good. to their roots is what they're trying to get at. Is like they're gonna have a little more of a classic feel. It's gonna be a little more between Showa and Heisei. Is what they're saying? Maybe it might just be classic, as in like early Heisei. I'd fucking, I'd, I'd like yeah. that more. Actually, I'd be on board with that too. I wouldn't like it more. I don't think, but I'd be on board with it. If this is like a Kuga style show or like an Agito, I'd totally be down with that. There's a a plot point where people are captured by the bad guys and experimented on. To I don't know if they turn them into Smash or something. They're captured by the bad guys and experimented on, and their memory comes out fuzzy. And the main character, if you remember, has no memory. Yeah, so, he's like, so he was experimented he's on. probably like a special experiment or something. He's got some fucked up thing that he was kidnapped by the bad guys and turned dun, into a dun, horrible dun. cyborg. Hopefully they whatever. don't do the fucking thing they've done before where it's like, actually, you're the leader of the bad guys. The Choose thing whether you want to lead us or not. That they do every common Rider show where the main character turns out to be the leader of the bad guys. Not everyone, you piece of shit. <laughs> I know, I'm making a shitty joke. It's, it's one of the ones that you haven't seen. I know what one you're talking about. Uh, whatever. They also say that um, uh, Banjo, they said Ryuga Banjo and the main character whose name I don't remember are going to develop into a very, like, double rider kind of dynamic. Oh, uh, it means they're going to kiss. It means they're going to kiss. So I'm, I'm terribly excited, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to build. Yeah, it's I'm silly. trying not to get, like, overhyped like I've done in the past. Yeah. Yeah. But they also but... mentioned, they're like, oh, uh, Sento, his name's Sento Kiryu, now that I'm looking at it. Sento Kiryu, build, is one of the smartest common riders. And much like... Uh, Takeshi Hongo, 
he may have been targeted because of his intelligence. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, so could it be? I don't know. I think they're just trying to hype you up, but probably. If there's but any it's substance, working. yeah. If there's any substance, I think that's super cool. Man, substance. That's a. <laughs> I missed that. That's a pun. What about you know what? I'm excited for build. I'm I'm not even I wouldn't say I'm even cautiously excited. I'm just excited. Yeah, and honestly I felt I remember us saying the exact same thing about X8 is we're not cautiously excited, we're optimistic period. And X8 turned out great, so Yeah. I, I only have one complaint with X8 and it's not even enough to ruin the show for me at all. I yeah. really love I love X8. Build looks cool, but we've been tricked before. Yeah. Uh <laughs> show which shall not be named. The the show, yeah, the show that we don't talk about anymore. No, we definitely don't mention every episode multiple times we, an episode, including this one. We, so yeah, far. we definitely didn't mention it today. But uh, oh well. So what is the not story? Okay, uh, the next time somebody tries to present you with uh, a, an official romanization as any kind of proof as to what a mm-hmm. translation is, I want you to know that the official translation for the Gorilla Diamond form of build is Goliramond. So Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> fuck everyone that uses that. The next like, time some fucking... motherfucker tries to tell you that Stronger's bike is named Kabuto Law, just show them the picture that says Goliramond and tell them to fuck off. It is Kabutoro. No, yeah. even though I like Kabuto Law. No. I like that name. Kabutoro sounds but it's way like... better. It's still, every time I see Byclosser, it makes me so angry. (laughs) So deep within my soul. I'm like, (laughs) you motherfuckers. Well, there's the thing that, like, um, Jet Condor, in the far shots inside of the um, hangar, when it shows all the planes, that's, like, obviously a matte painting. Mm. uh, Jet Condor says Jet Condol (laughs) in all of those. Just like uh, Tajadol from O's. Yeah, exactly. Or, um... Who could forget Alain from Ghost? Who Alain. Could, who could forget uh, everyone's favorite character, Riam? <laughs> <laughs> it's it fucking... It's madness. It's, it's madness. Just... Toei, please. get, an, get uh, Not even... You don't even need an English speaker. Anybody who speaks any kind of romance language will do. To just look yeah. over it once before you send it out. It's. I always point to the fact that Krillin is named Kuririn. Kuririn. And his hat says Kalilin <laughs> on it. <laughs> Which are just different, different shittier pronunciations of Krillin. Really. Yeah. Really. Like, I'd I rather mean, call him Krillin than Kuririn. Yeah, I call him Krillin. Krillin, it's, it's just, it's just, it rolls off your tongue. It works better. It works better than Kuririn. Kuririn. In the official manga, he's Kuririn. Yeah. Fuck that. It's like the fact that uh, he's Tian Shen Han. Yeah. And all shit. Like, Shen Han's his last name. You don't need to say it all the time. <laughs> or first name, maybe. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> Dragon Ball's weird because it's a Japanese manga that's based on a Chinese story. So a lot of the characters have Chinese style names, and a mm. lot of them have Japanese style names. Mm. So it's really difficult for me. A dumb English speaker. <laughs> Stupid American. Stupid Canadian. A pig, American pig dog. To That's understand. me. I am, I am an American oink bark. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. Um, why don't we talk about uh, Chojin Sentai Jetman episodes 11 and 12? Yes, these episodes are about a soft drink machine that turns you into who you really are. It turns you into, like, a hidden part of your personality. The, the darkest, deepest part of you comes forth. Which would turn Liam, I guess, into some sort of a sex pervert. <laughs> and about a fucking bus. Yeah, a murder bus. Oh, God, I love the bus episode. I, I did like the murder bus episode. Both episodes this time are actually good episodes. Which one are we going to really talk good. about first? I forget which one came first. Uh, Evil Vending Machine Evil came Vending first. Machine was... Where... It's, it's like you said last week. Where Jetman seems to come in pairs of like, here's a totally silly episode, like a totally silly Sun Vulcan episode, and then here's an episode that's a little more serious and a little more emotional. Mm-hmm. And a that's bit this more one. murder. The the vending machine was totally silly, and the murder bus was a little more serious and a little more real. 
which murder, we'll get to bu- later. murder bus was a little more real. <laughs> little, well, no, really, this, the it lady. Was. Oh, I want. I really yeah. want to get to that one. <laughs> well, let's let's first talk about. Uh, there's an evil vending machine. Like Gray, the robot who loves to smoke and drink all he day smokes, long. He smokes a cigar in every shot that he's in this episode. He's got a cigar. And he loves uh, drinking wine. Mm-hmm. So he's everyone's mother, I guess. <laughs> um, and he his plan is he's going to send a vending machine in to give all of the Jetmans uh, juice that brings out their innermost, darkest personality trait that they keep to themselves. And it's funny that Guy's is that he turns into a really good guy. He turns into Ryu. He He pretty much does turn into Ryu. Suddenly he cares and is heroic and wants to go out and help people. Um, We learn that Raita is Guy, basically. I thought they were like uh, changing personalities Mm -hmm. for a while. But uh, Ryu is lazy as fuck. Ryu turned into me, really. <laughs> and uh, fucking Kaori is the rich bitch. Kaori turns into herself, just her normal self. And uh, <laughs> Akko becomes like a very extremely sensitive, like, oh, like everything makes her cry, everything makes her yeah. emotional. She's always thinking about dreams and the, emotions. The short and... lives of flowers and... All it's these... a really funny episode. It's, it's the very commander comical. even tries to shoot Ryu to death because he's lazy. <laughs> That's the best part. He's the commander is desperately like Ryu. You have to transform. So she throws him out of a fucking helicopter. <laughs> she points a gun at him and is like, "I can't bear to see you live as a lazy man." And it's not like a big. It's not like a Sentai gun. It's just like a fucking no, it's eagle. A, it's it's <laughs> a fucking Beretta nine millimeter, and she just opens fire on him. Oh, it's a really and my good, favorite yeah. part after that is he's flying in the helicopter and he's like, nah, I don't feel like it. She's like, back up your teammates. It just hands him the nine millimeter. Yeah. And he starts firing out the window. He's like, so, well, this is easy. I'll just shoot, I guess. Oh, man. He reminds yeah. me so much of myself. <laughs> like He's like the comedically slow-talking Japanese lazy stereotype. Like, okay, I'll join your Sentai team. But can I just sit in a chair and shoot a gun? I don't want to actually fight. I don't need to transform even. Don't give me a belt or anything. Just give me a gun. Nah, just give me a regular... Give me a fucking forty five. I'll ride shotgun. Open fire. Someone else will drive. I'll ride shotgun and I'll just shoot out the window at the monster. And they finally overcome their personalities and band together and defeat the vending machine. Mm. And uh, they have... A really great chat at the end about their personalities being hidden and how some of them accept them and others don't. Like, Guy doesn't accept his. Yeah. And Raita doesn't accept his, but everybody else accepts theirs. I like that they. It's. The narration makes it painfully, disgustingly obvious, but it's like they grow a little closer as teammates. They learn a little bit about each yeah. other. Yeah. I love that, uh. Ryu's like maybe the chief's a giant fucking bitch and they all laugh (laughs) nobody thinks to say yeah no that's not hidden that's right there no that is her actual personality she is a harsh slave driving woman yeah and maybe her hidden personality is a nice lady who knows maybe I did like seeing Raita try to be a cool guy and failing horribly (laughs) Nah, he was cool as fuck. Yeah, he was so cool with his rain boots, with his big galoshes. I love that he, like, pulls out a handkerchief and, like, dusts his disgustingly dirty galoshes off. (laughs) (laughs) He runs up to a lady and he's like, hey, have dinner with me, baby. (laughs) Of course he gets slapped. His deepest, darkest side. He remembers that three dates in a lifetime. He was trying to get that last one in. (laughs) The first episode doesn't have a whole lot of substance to it, but it's it is a funny. really fun episode. Yeah, it's it's funny and it does what it sets out to do. Brings the team closer. Yeah. The second one is the real big dick swinging great episode. <laughs> big where dick swinging great Ride episode. Ryder and Cowrie are trapped on a bus and people are dying. They're being turned into foam. Yeah, every time they drive through a tunnel, which apparently Japan has, like, a shit ton of. <laughs> it's just funny. I've literally never driven through a tunnel You've never driven in my through life. a tunnel? No. 
Well, yeah, 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 I have. Like, it's cities, I guess. Oh, yeah, okay. But, like, just out in the countryside, like, it keeps happening here. Yeah. They ride through tunnels all the time. Yeah, in the world and, of Jetman, you cannot go to pick up some eggs from the store without riding through <laughs> six tunnels. And uh, somebody, they're just all on a bus together having a good time. Str- four strangers, a bus driver, Kauri, and Raita. And one of the... There's five, actually, to begin with, because one of them turns into soap suds. Like, he was a fucking shocker combatman. <laughs> and they're like, oh my god, what happened? And my favorite part is that... <laughs> I didn't know the world knew about Viram. I thought, mm. like, you know, maybe some faces appeared in the sky and they were like, oh shit! Yeah. And then everything went back to normal. So when Wright is like, maybe it's Viram, and everybody looks at him funny, <laughs> I was like... They're definitely gonna be like, is this, did this fucking crazy man murder? <laughs> <laughs> but no, they all know Viram. They all and know nobody him. blames either of our main characters for this murder, even once in yeah. the whole episode. There's a huge whodunit in this episode. That's like the main thing is like, who, which of the passengers is turning people into soap suds? And they and keep turning nobody, into soap suds one by one. Nobody casts suspicion on Kauri or Raita, despite them being incredibly suspicious characters. No. It turns out that one of the people on the bus is a police detective who is one day away from retirement. <laughs> and uh, doesn't die. Yeah, it was when he said that, I had to say out loud to myself, R.I.P. detective. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he fucking survives. I, and then, not only that, but the super suspicious bus driver who's wearing a face mask and sunglasses turns out to just be a bank robber who's yeah. hiding from the law. There's a there's a suspicious lady who like the second they start talking about a murder she like puts her sunglasses on and looks away, and she's like the the show is pretty good at sending like false positives at you. Oh yeah. But it turns out she's just there because she's going to the lake to kill herself because she can't find a boyfriend or something and she keeps fucking well, up she, in every respect. Yeah, her whole life is fucked. Yeah. And she's gonna take sleeping pills and jump in a lake, which is apparently like a real popular thing according to her. Mm. Everyone's doing uh, it these days. However, she is going to take sleeping pills to jump in a lake, so maybe you really shouldn't listen to what she has to say about it. <laughs> and she's uh, elated. She's like, well, now I don't have to deal with this lake shit. I'll just turn into soap bubbles. I don't like water that much, so... <laughs> it just works out for me that someone's killing everyone on this bus. Yeah. Anyways, um, in the end, it's it turns out that the bus itself is a Viram bus. Which I guess Which, should have been obvious. Yeah, when it happened, I was like, am I some sort of an idiot? Why didn't I know this? <laughs> like, that should have been your first... I didn't realize it either. It should have been my first fucking hypothesis. Yeah. was like, it's the bus. It's it's bus dimension, but I'm an idiot, so... Yeah, for some reason, I, I didn't even think about it. I just thought it was going to be a normal whodunit. The fact that they had apartment dimension, and this didn't set off any bells for us, means we're both f- fucking morons, so... Yeah, I mean... This is why we're not jet men, I guess. <laughs> we didn't pass the, the smartness test. No, th- we got hit with the birdonic rays, but we didn't pass the written exam. So. <laughs> the second episode is, like, w- really, really great. I love the episode. It's much darker. It's so dark compared to the first one. It's only that dark because the lady's gonna fucking it's kill herself. Defi- and yeah, she's super excited lady. about it. <laughs> They're like, why do you have these pills? And she's like, I got those to kill myself. And I was like, bah! A show for eight-year-olds. <laughs> what the fuck? I was thinking about that, that, like, children's shows in Japan at a certain point had uh, mystery plots where people were being murdered one by one on a bus, and that was apparently 100% cool. Mm. They'll, they'll let anything fly on TV in Japan in the 80s I mean, and 90s. I, I guess. It's, yeah. um... It's a great episode, though. I really enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it myself. I really like both of them, just for totally different reasons. Yeah, I mean, it was like two completely different genres yeah. of television show. Yeah, Jetman keeps you guessing. You know, this episode's moving along at a brisk pace. We are already at the email portion of the Wait, show. Wait, I can grind us to a halt. How so? I watched Common uh, Rider Brave Survive and Live On Return of the Beast Rider Squad. Jesus, these names are getting longer. I know. (laughs) I just want you to know right now that the story, there is none. It's complete nonsense. But um, Asakura Takeshi comes back. Oh, yeah. You didn't know that? No, I mean, I I do. But he's like the star of the show. He's the best. 
He and they let him be violent too. Thankfully, he's like fifty years old. He's like fifty years old, but there's a scene where he just brutalizes a woman in a back alley with a pipe. Like he doesn't do any kind of shit. He just beats her within an inch of her life with a pipe. And there's another scene where he's, he fights Emu, but it's not a rider fight. He just beats him up with a pipe, and then he sticks his face in a barrel full of broken glass, and Emu comes up and his face is all bloody and stabbed, and he's, like, throwing him around and hitting him with a pipe and breaking his ribs and shit. And I'm like, yes, they're letting him be a horrible psycho murderer. They didn't hold him back. Thank Christ. There's... What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's... Man. Like he what sticks, the fuck? Like, at first you think it's just a barrel, like he sticks Emu's face in a barrel, and then as he pulls Emu's face out, you see a bunch of just shattered glass and discarded needles and shit in it, and Emu's face is all bloody, and it's like, oh my god, it's a really what? fantastic thing. Liam, uh, are you making this up? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Go and watch it. It's only 20 minutes. Go and watch it. Maybe I will. It's Maybe it's, I will. It's got no story. It's the, the fucking King Dark from Kamen Rider X is in it. Why? He's, <laughs> he's in it, and he's revived all these beast riders to go and he needs this gashat, this safari gashat, for no fuck. He just needs it really badly. He doesn't say why. He just totally needs it. And is, this is this the fucking common rider world special where <laughs> fucking Shadow Moon's the villain for this, no reason? It, it might as well be a roller coaster ride. And this guy reverse pickpockets it onto Emu. For no reason. You ever find out who the guy is, or why he reverse pickpockets it, or where the Gashat comes from? Is this a part one? No. 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 It ends. He reverse pickpockets it onto Emu. Uh, Fucking uh, Steel Pipe Man, Takeshi, beats it out of him. Knocks it on the ground. And then goes to murder another woman, who... Fuck, Kamen Rider Tiger stabs a woman in the shower, and cuts her up, and takes her to a warehouse to murder her. And Asakura Takeshi is there as well. And Emu is uh, unconscious because his face is all bloody. But Brave takes the Safari Gashat and beats the fuck out of everyone. And then he murders Asakura Takeshi. And then it turns out King Dark from Kamen Rider X was a hologram by a Foundation X guy who really needed the Gashat, which Brave just drops off screen. He uses it, and then everyone's like, where's the Gashat? And Brave's like, ah, I fucking dropped it. And then Foundation X has it, and they put it in a foam briefcase and walk away. Yeah, that's the story. I don't know what happened. Uh, Takeshi's in it, though, so it's cool. Why do you keep calling him Takeshi? He's Asakura Takeshi. Asakura. Well, whatever. He's, he's the same There's shit. There's so much... Like, you're basically being like, and then John's in it, and that's good. <laughs> well, you know Takeshi like, Asakura, what John? right? John? <laughs> Takeshi Asakura. Kamen Rider Oja. We fucking... Let's um read some emails. Okay, moving on from that. Uh, go Our watch first... Beast Rider Squad if you haven't. I guess I will. <laughs> Our first email is from Dewey Defeats Truman. Okay. Who, who said, uh, you said the questions didn't have to be about common writers, so fuck it. What's the best hard-boiled heavy in Sonic Mania? Have you played Sonic Mania? No, I haven't. It's a fun game. I heard it's really good. I want to try it. It is It is really good. I, I got it a couple days room. ago. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, the best hard-boiled heavy is the one who transforms into Sonic the Fighters characters. I don't know their names. Really? There's one that Spoilers. does that? Yes. That's so He transforms good. into Bean the Dynamite, Bark the Polar Bear, and Fang the Sniper. That's lovely. Does Metal Sonic make an appearance in Mania? Yes. Is he yeah. a boss fight? Yes. Is he a boss fight where you have to run while doing it? Yes. Okay. It is basically a remix to the Stardust Speedway boss fight. Okay, I'm happy. I'm going to buy it then. It is really good. That's the selling point. Um... To try to tie this back into Toku, I just wanted to say that I started Shinkenger a few weeks ago, and it's pretty good. We should all aspire to be more like Shinken Brown. <laughs> I love that man. Yeah. I love that man. Shinkenger is actually really good. I, I, haven't seen I it. highly recommend it. I haven't seen it. I've only seen we it We watched it one. in stream. Yeah, I don't think I was there for that. No, you weren't there. No. It was it was us and this next man, uh, Max, writes in. Hey, friend who, of the show, Max. Friend of the show, Max, who was in um, our commentary track. Our Kamen Rider Fies commentary. Kamen Rider Fies. He'll be at MAGFest. Um, he will be at MAGFest with us. You can come and say hi. Gosh darn, I'm excited if you, for MAGFest. If you know what any of us look like, you yeah, can come luck. and say hi. I think I might uh, extend the Sengoku driver and maybe just wear that. Like, not a cosplay, just have that shit on. Wow. Yeah. I don't want to hang out with you there. It's a fucking convention, man. It's embarrassing. I can wear I don't a see fucking that. <laughs> kiss and Goku driver if I feel like it. I really thought you meant just that. 
You're just gonna wear this Sengoku <laughs> no, driver no and extend it to where it goes yeah. over your junk. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike says, "Hey, folks." I love me some good-ass character traits, don't you? Mm. But one thing that kind of irks me is when Toku characters have a favorite food and they only eat that food as a defining character trait. It doesn't really add anything to the character. If anything, it might get some cheap chuckles, like mayonnaise man is eating mayonnaise again, hearty har har. What do you guys think of that trope? Also, what are some character traits that you guys do like? Your friend, Max. P.S. I'll splat you goons any day of the damn week. Oh, yeah. Max destructified us on Splatoon 2 the other yeah, day. Yeah, he's he's really damn good. He's, he's no Ink Poppy, but he's alright. No, shout out to Ink Poppy for keeping <laughs> us in the winner circle. Yeah. <laughs> keeping um, us in the winner circle when you're on our team, and keeping yeah. us humble when you're on the other team. <laughs> he taught us the meaning of humble pie, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not such a big fan of that trope, right? Like, oh, I'm... I love mayonnaise, I love so milk. I'm going to eat mayonnaise on everything. Mm. I love milk, so I'm just going to drink milk with disgusting slurping and gulping noises in every scene I'm in. I have a friend who is a mayonnaise man, and he's disgusting. Mayonnaise is fine. Mayonnaise I don't really is, eat man. it that often. But... It's okay, but this dude like dollops it on everything he eats. It's inhuman. Uh, that is inhuman. That's some, He's some sort of a mole creature. Definitely. It's like mole creatures that live in the center of the earth fucking love mayonnaise. Love mayonnaise, well-known fact. Yeah, top tip if you're looking for mole creatures. <laughs> if you want to lure one. If you want to tell if your friend's a mole creature, offer him a mayonnaise sandwich, I guess. Here's the thing, with shitty writing like that, it's not, like, food gets used a lot, but it's not just food. Sometimes they just have one thing. Like, uh, I like to, I don't know, I like math. And so all they do is math. Every single situation, they try and graft math onto it. Like, I love science. Yeah, I love science. So I gotta, I'm a science I'm gonna do person. science every... And I don't have any character science beyond that. Quotes. I must do science in every scene. It's like... Like, the food is probably the worst examples of it. Yeah, that's I'm the gonna one that's, eat my donuts. That's the worst. <laughs> I like milk. Yeah, it's like, that's the most irritating example. But there are other ones that are also shit that do get used a lot in, like, tokusatsu and, like, anime and, like, anything for kids. Will Dude, have... the thing that drives me nuts is when uh, anime and manga does this all the fucking time, where they have a character who is literally just Goku. Mm. Like, I, I get that Dragon Ball was this formative experience for a lot of people who are now coming into making manga, right? Yeah, I mean, we watched it when uh, we were kids and we're in our 20s and 30s and shit. Yeah, and it's like, do something different. There's so <laughs> many, like, shitty knockoff animes, mangas, whatever, where the main character's like, I eat a lot of food, and I'm childish. Mm-hmm. Like, we saw that already, like, 20-some years ago. Yeah, and they do. 30 years ago, it's, actually. It's still fucking working. One Piece is still going. Yeah, I mean, Luffy has other traits Luffy besides kinda, that. He, he is very Goku-esque. He's, he's he the, is. Like, he's got no social tact. He eats a shitload of meat. He's childish. He has no idea what romance is. Yeah, but he has a lot of... He has this drive, right, that is the center of his character to become... To do, like, the impossible. To prove everyone wrong. Mm. And uh, he's, like, really big into the whole Nakama thing, right? Yeah. And that rounds out his character in a way that makes him different. Somewhat. Uh, he is very Goku-esque, but he's not the same character with nothing else. Mm, yeah. And, I don't know, it just bugs the shit out of me. I hate that. Yeah. When, when like, something like, I eat a lot, I love to eat, is my whole, the whole character. <laughs> if, if you put a character into your story that's only trait whatsoever is that they like milk, you probably don't need that character in the story. <laughs> Just take them out. Uh, see, what you should do with your main characters is make them straight up evil and make them murder people for, uh, like, petty inconveniences that they give you, much like Yugi. Yeah, that makes a great main character. And then try and turn it around and pretend like they're a big hero later on. Like, no, I, I remember that time when you blinded a guy for life. No, nah, that didn't just happen. that shit. You always bring up the blinding a guy for life. He fucking murdered a man. He, that's he true. murdered he, him. He did light a guy on fire. He, he fuck. He he blew a dude up with nitroglycerin. <laughs> He's fucking dead. They he had to bury him. The school had a service. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so what are some character traits that you do like, Liam? I don't know if I'd call it a trait, but I like a character with inner turmoil. Like a, mm, a hero like who... an edgelord. The, <laughs> a guy who has to make tough decisions and who has some sort of private thing going on that forces him to do bad stuff. And he's, he's, he's sort of tormented by that. Not in a main character, per se, but like in a side character that can be very compelling. I love a main character who shits on the villains that he's beating up. Who just, like, shit talks them and makes them out to be punk-ass bitches. Like Spider-Man? Yeah, like a Spider-Man. Yeah. Or, like, how I thought Ghost was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something I always enjoyed about Tendo, is that everyone he fights, he just makes out to be a punk bitch. And uh, he goes he way fight, too far with it. Everyone but... he doesn't fight, and everybody around him, too. Yeah, ex- that's where he goes too far. I still <laughs> love him, but... I love a Spider-Man who just makes fun of his villains and enrages them while Ooh. he's fighting them. Yeah, that's a fun uh, trait. I love the stoic, like, badass that also has, like, the burning, the hot blood. I love a hot-blooded protagonist. Mm. Who's just like, all about beating ass. Like the dude from G-Gundam, or... Yeah, yeah, like uh, you know, hot blooded characters like the I, what's the anything from a Go Nagai manga? Uh, don't know that name. Well, like anybody from like Getter Robo, okay, like that type of stuff. Yeah, a lot of mecha protagonists have that kind of. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Um, I don't like a wimp main character. I'm real tired of that at this point. Like, I get the idea that they're like learning to be a fighter and overcoming it or whatever but um i'm about tired of that shit i like unlikely protagonists like that someone who's sort of thrust into being a hero yeah I, there's a difference between an unlikely protagonist and a wimp it's like a not all unlikely protagonists are wimps but all wimps are unlikely protagonists yeah, type of thing usually yeah like, I like an unlikely protagonist that's just, like, completely in over their head, and they're like, well, shit, I don't know! <laughs> I like that a lot better than, I don't know what to do, oh, poor me. Mm. Mm. That's what we get a lot in tokusatsu, though. Yeah, that's true. Bill yeah. seems like a, a very... He seems kind of smug, which I like. He seems like he knows yeah. how smart he is. Like, there's a bit when he's... Uh... That was in the trailer where he's like in the basement showing off his bike to his cafe owner guy. And he's like, what do you think of it? You think it's good? You think it's cool? You think it's genius? It looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. <laughs> uh, he does seem like he's going to be really cool. Yeah. Um, I like a goofy side character that doesn't just um, mug at the camera and yell. Like my favorite, one of my favorite characters in Dragon Ball is Krillin. Yeah, everyone loves He Krillin. is a ridiculous, goofy side character, mm. but he's still useful, and he's he doesn't acknowledge that he's a goofy side character. That's not his purpose. Mm-hmm. And like in Yu Yu Hakusho, my favorite character is Kuwabara. Mm, yeah. A, a goof idiot that doesn't know he's a goof idiot at yeah. all is one of my favorite characters. You got another one, or are you done? Uh, that's all for me. Well, uh, Liam only likes Edge Lords. <laughs> you know that. That's, that is it. I know. Our next, our next <laughs> email is from Ferris, who says, "Jeff, Liam, sometime listener, first time emailer person. Oh, as you mentioned Monster Fusions last time, I'll point out that they kind of they have kind of done that in the Drive Ninja crossover. There was a combination Roidmued Yokai." who was also a member of Shocker because they had to promote superhero Tyson GP somehow. Of course. I think I vaguely remember that. Anyway, x It was nice to see Dr. Mighty get some more use after its last use was weirdly negated, and the scene where the main writers all went level 1 again to separate Cronus and Gamedius was a very neat callback. Although it also proved just how pointless the levels are now. <laughs> It was kind of funny to see Gen Mubi mistaken for X8 again, but Bill's cameo felt pretty jarring in the plot of the episode. I agree. I uh, yeah, it was fun, but that's not an excuse to just throw that. It's I mean, that's like like I said, it's just something you have to take with common writers, the toy commercial stuff. 
uh, question. If you could pick one Heisei rider and give them a legend rider form for a Showa rider, which would you pick? I'd go with Forze and give him a Rider Man states, using arm astro switches to emulate the cassette arms, which is a great idea. I think there is... Like, uh, Forze had a bunch of Rider switches, and I believe there is a Rider Man one that gives him a hook on his arm. A Rider... A legend Rider form. You know what I would do? Mm. I would give Kabuto, like, a super stronger form. Oh, yeah. Where he just gets, like, the white paint on his regular outfit and a bigger head horn and gets, like, electrical powers when he uses it. Yeah, that'd be super cool. <laughs> what about you? I think Ornak is past due. Of course. And he should get... Ooh. That's tough. No, no, no. Actually, no. I'd give Merica a tackle form. Oh, that's great. Because I'm a worthless tackle fan. I love how you still use Ornak. Yeah, I'm, I'm sticking that. my guns on Ornak. It, is, it always down. cracks me up because uh, it's a fucking. It makes me think of the Golden Girls every single time. Why? Because of Dorothy Zabornak. <laughs> <laughs> that is a deep cut there. How? Yes, it is. <laughs> also, uh, I looked this up right. I forgot to mention it when we were talking about uh, uh, Jetman. Hmm. But I'll mention it now. Raita mentions that it's Golden Week. And I was like, what the fuck is that? So I looked it up, and the Japanese have a state-sponsored week of holidays. Yeah, I they know. They just get off work. Golden Week is bullshit. That's amazing! I want that! <laughs> I learned what that was from uh, One Piece, actually, coming back to yeah. that. When I, was, when I was a kid, there's an arc where everyone's like named after... Uh, like a holiday there's like Miss Merry Christmas and all that and one of them is Miss Golden Week and I was like what the, and you were like, again, what the fuck like, what the fuck is that my little 12 year old self what the fuck is Golden Week yeah April 29th through May 5th is Golden Week sun's up that is so nice yeah why not me why not me uh, anyway to get back to the actual fucking point uh, I thought of another Heisei Rider I would give a Legend Rider form to for show up what's that I would do it would be Common Rider Double and one half of him would be Common Rider Black, and the other half would be Black RX. Oh, that's so clever. <laughs> and the Black RX half would have the Rydal sword. Yeah. Man. Oh, that's cool. I would love that. I would give uh, Ryuki a form based on Jacker, because he has the cards. And I know it's Sentai, but they have cards, and he'd, he'd be drawing cards You can't and do that. I, can, I just did, motherfucker. What you are you going to do? It's not... It's not... He didn't say Rider, I guess. He said Showa form. Did he? I think is, he implicitly... He it meant is Rider, called Legend but... Rider, though, so... <laughs> Legend Sentai. Shh. What a piece of shit. Shh. Our next email is from Jake LaSnake, who says... Jake L. Snake-o. Uh, hey, Jeff and Liam. I remember how the level one chibi forms were something most people weren't too keen on back when the series was starting. It's great to see the writers had them be the key to winning the fight on the second to last episode. The sacrifices of Poppy and Parrot were touching moments that made me feel sad that True Ending is supposed to be the epilogue, since it feels to me like they're taking away the impact of those scenes, because you know they'll be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's impressive that Masamune is yet to bite the dust, mostly because of how he's been granted the powers of not one, but two main JoJo villains. Time Stop and Great Luck. <laughs> Questions. One, with the release of x aids soundtrack, if you got to listen to any of the insert songs in full, were there any of them you liked in particular? I'm surprised that the villains ended up with the cooler songs. Justice, Masamune's, Wish in the Dark, Dan's, and Real Game, Parrots. Masamune's actor is a cool dude for not only playing his character, but singing his own character's theme song, too. You got any, Liam? For some reason with Ryder, I'm usually not big into insert songs. Mm, I like the I mean, ones the only the one... lyrics. The only one I was really big into was the O's insert songs. Oh, yeah, of course. Because those are the ones had real effort put into them. Uh, the, usually the ones after that are, or like the other ones are, are, are like, yeah. Mm, I don't know why. I, I feel bad because, like, you get stuff like uh, Mox that was, I forget what it's called, Spinning Wheel or Burning Wheel or something. That, like, everyone it was lost Spinning Wheel. Spinning Wheel. Yeah. And everyone lost it over it. They were like, oh, it's so good. And I heard it, and I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just have shit taste. I'm just not a I don't know. I like it the, got the hyped up really hard, too, because I thought it wasn't as good as people were saying it was. But it was good. I liked it. Yeah. Um, 
I have not listened to any of these songs, and I don't remember hearing any of them either. So, wasn't that the big joke for a long time that people were like, "Does X8 even have insert songs?" Yeah, I haven't. I'll have to look those up because I haven't seen them either. I mean, is it really an insert song if it doesn't appear in the show? It's an insert song because you have to insert it yourself by putting it on while the show is playing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just full of shit. <laughs> but I haven't actually heard them, so I, I, I was doing that question mostly for you. No, no. <laughs> I haven't heard them either. Well, we both screwed the pooch on that one, everybody. I spent my entire week this week was watching Beast Rider Squad on loop. I didn't do anything else. So Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was really intense. I played video games, personally. <laughs> I didn't do anything Rider-related. Cool. Uh, two, I know this is going to involve major spoilers, but what are some of your favorite moments in a Rider series near the end when the base form was given a chance to shine like level ones were given this week? Ooh. Uh, Ooh. He describes one, but I'm not going to say it because it's a spoiler. I'm trying to figure a way to say it without spoiling it either. Uh, Garen doing it is what he's saying. Okay, okay. But I'm not going to get into the specifics. Um... I'll say Gaim did it. Yeah, I can just say Gaim. Gaim uses briefly his first form in the fight against the uh, the dude against the thing against the villain. <laughs> I don't know if I have an answer to that. I like he what Gaim does is he he like escalates like he starts in orange, then he goes to uh, Lemon Raymond, then he goes to yeah. Kachioki, and it's like it's like this escalation, which I thought was very cool. I like that. I got a real kick mm. out of that. I don't know if I can remember one, honestly. I think it's coming to light that I don't actually watch these shows. Like, people are going to figure it out. Well, most of our favorite writer <laughs> shows don't really have... Like, you look at, like, say, uh, Ryuki, right? Uh-huh. You got two forms. And 90% of the yeah. time he uses the, the regular form, and then he only pulls out Survive when it gets kind of serious. So, like, when he uses the regular first form, it's not special ever. It's not, like, a big a big occasion. Yeah. Like, oh, he's pulling out the first form again. It just happens. Both- we're both big into early Heisei, I yeah. guess. And in early Heisei, there are three forms max. Yeah, same usually. with Fies. Like, Fies only had a couple forms, so pulling out his base form is not like a big, yeah. oh, they're going back. It's just like he's, he's just using it. I feel like a relic sometimes because of that, right? Like, I'm not... It's not even that I was watching these shows when they were on. I didn't start watching until Double, but nobody references them most of the time. And when mm-hmm. people talk about Ryder, they're really obviously talking about, like, post-decade Ryder. Post-decade, Rider. yeah. So I feel like this. I should be in a damn museum somewhere. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my pick is Gaim. I don't have a pick because I'm a piece of shit. I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. I ruined your entire email. Uh, thank I have to, you. We actually do this episode so, over again, actually, because you fucked it up so bad. We gotta start. From well, the sorry everybody. Hopefully, you don't get this bad version that we're gonna finish for fun. <laughs> um, thank you, just to Liam, I guess, since you're the only one that answered. Mm. And looking forward to the next episode, as always, Jake the Snake. Thank you, Jake, Thanks. for writing in all the time. We appreciate it. Sorry about the answers. Yeah. Our next email is from Graham. Hey. Who says, last time you were talking about how many Q Rangers there were, and there are actually 100. I don't believe you. There are 12 in the team right now, but the Phoenix Q Ranger had 88 allies in the past that all died. Like, how shitty do you have to be as a Q-Ranger, right? <laughs> Where, like, 88 of you get murdered, but, like, the team of nine has been fine so far. They must be real prodigies, those nine. Our next question is from Swirly Jiffy. Okay. Who says, hey, Jeff and Liam, a few questions for you this week as we reach the twilight of x One, what's your opinion on the cameos by the next writer in the current writer shows or movie? What's your favorite slash least favorite cameo so far? Uh, uh, my him. favorite is Genmu styling the fuck all over everybody on a BMX bike. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite's probably Ghost because it promised so much. Mm, promised see, so much it's cool my shit. least favorite because it promised so much and then the show fucking did nothing. Like if you look at Ghost's cameo in a vacuum, I really enjoyed it. He's like all invisible and mysterious, and drives got a drives his nose belt, so he's got to rely on him. It was cool, but like... Yeah, he's, he's like, mysterious and cool, and he, like, says cool shit and does cool poses, and then he turns out to be a bitch much, in the yeah, show. Pretty much the exact opposite of how the show was, unfortunately. Yeah. It's like it's a completely different guy. Yeah. Maybe it was. Maybe there's a whole story that hasn't been told yet. Maybe. Ghost, Ghost RX coming next year. 
God no. <laughs> God no. Uh, my least favorite is this one, the build one. Mm. Because uh, at least the action in the others was good. The one in this one was just meh. I remember Gaim appearing in Wizard being kind of dumb, like he came through a portal or something like that. Oh yeah, I, I didn't gonna, see that. I think so. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick. Well, gosh, G Willikers. G golly gosh. It was a while ago. I don't remember it very well, and I didn't actually watch Wizard. I just saw that bit. Uh, you I'll agree with you. Builds was a little lackluster. You fucking to- fake Toku girl. I know I'm a fake Tokusatsu girl. Um, question two. Has there ever been a subject or activity you've gotten really interested in thanks to a piece of media? Does not have to be toku. Oh my god. That's, I got, uh... I got really into Fleetwood Mac when I heard a Fleetwood Mac song. Does that count? Mm, mm, I got really into the Beatles and then started playing bass guitar. Oh no. What? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Oh, uh, I'm trying to fucking think. Explain yourself, you piece of shit. No. <laughs> um, I got into... I wanted to be a chef when I was little because of Iron Chef. Really? Iron Chef Japan. And uh, then I stopped at some point. I don't know why. And then I wanted to become an artist because of Mario Paint. I loved playing Mario Paint a lot mm. when I was a kid. And then I became an artist, and I really should have fucking probably become a chef. Honestly. <laughs> I always tell people that I became an artist because of Mario Paint and fucking Mario... Every other job that Mario does, he makes, like, six figures at. Like, fucking plumbers get paid a ton. Yeah, plumbers are pretty lucrative. He's a doctor, an archaeologist. Even fucking referees get paid more than I do. (laughs) I should have done any of his other jobs. Don't forget pro athlete. Yeah. I definitely should have been a pro athlete. You picked the worst Mario job. Have you ever gotten into a subject or activity because of a piece of media? Uh, much like you, I started playing piano because of Tiny Dancer. Tiny Dancer is what got you into piano? Yeah, really. Dang. I want to play Elton Tiny John Dancer. here. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of anything like a hobby I picked up. See, I, I want to play. I want to play Come Together. Uh, I see. Boom, 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 boom. I watched boom, the boom. horrible, horrible Dungeons and Dragons movie. And you wanted to play Dungeons and Would Dragons? You to play Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. <laughs> That's how I got into that. That's one uh, of the reasons I got into that. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. I actually got into it from watching uh, Conan and the Destroyer, so... Really? Yeah. That's I wanted good. to... Because Conan the Destroyer is literally just somebody's Dungeons and Dragons it's game. Very They made him do a movie. Yeah. Very classic fantasy swords and sorcery uh, yeah he literally forms a party with yeah. like a wizard a lady barbarian and a thief yeah. so <laughs> is that it is that all you ever got into that's all that's actually the only hobby i have yeah wow damn yeah that's all i do uh question three what do you think are the strengths slash weaknesses of a multi-rider series versus one with a limited group and then he he says up to four or five is that not a multi-rider series? The definition of single rider series and multi-rider series is so foggy that I just don't use them. I don't use those terms because well, he no does one say seems limited group. Yeah, that's true. But some people I'd like say some, limited group goes up to four. I would some say people five would refer to Blade as a single rider series, which is so weird that I just don't. But then you say multi-rider series, and it's like. Well, I mean, Agito's got four riders. Is that a multi-rider series? I'd say, like, four is my cutoff point. Okay, but, but then the term multi-rider series makes no sense. Because every rider, like, every, like Kuga is your single rider series. Everything else is, has more than one rider, right? It's got multiple riders. The terms don't really matter here. Okay, it's like Neo Heisei, just throw it out. It doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. The question is, what do you think are the strengths and weaknesses of a series with a limited group up to four? I'll cut off there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Swirly Jiffy. Up to four versus a series that has five or more, or like a shit ton, like 13. What are the strengths and weaknesses? Uh, a series with just four characters or less leaves a lot of room for development and interaction with those four characters. Yeah, which is what I prefer. But at the same time as 50 episodes with just them... Whereas a show with more, say uh, Ryuki or Gaim, where there's like a shit little shit zillion writers, uh, has more 
inter like more interpersonal interactions, more interpersonal fights, more like personal. Yeah, but stakes. but like less per character. But so less, you get yeah, less... less focus on everyone. There's always a couple characters that come out as like, here's just nothing. He's he's a rider and he's fucking yeah. just no one. He he's a little bitch and he has a tiny hammer. This, this is gonna be there's gonna be always like one or two riders in every rider multi rider series that are just like ah. Uh, He's here to fill out the roster. Yeah. Which, which is the weakness. It's usually like a lot of them. There's yeah. a lot of those, and then there's like four or five characters that are really fleshed out. Yeah, there's the main gang, and then instead of monsters, you have other riders, kind of. That's how those uh, big, yeah. like, big jamboree series really usually work. I don't know. It's you're. It's like fucking six of one, half a dozen of another, really, when you have either of them. You're mm. going to have four or five characters that get a lot of focus in either of them. Mm. Like, the like thing it, is, when you have a multiple, like, a lot of rider series, you also have all these other characters that you have to do something with. Yeah. And it's like, it's... it's Like you said, there's there's more you can do with that series, and you have more characters to work with, and you don't risk that, that thing of, like, you don't risk falling into Monster of the Week as much. Because you have characters who are, have their own plans and have their own schemes and whatever. Uh, but it's kind of hard at the same time mm. to juggle so many characters if you have a lot. I, I always think of... Um, I guess Dragon Ball would be a good example of this where uh, Toriyama just forgot that launch existed. <laughs> yeah. He just forgot. And, I mean, I, I always use Bleach as an example Bleach has literally 10 million characters in it, mm-hmm. and I couldn't tell you anything about most of them, because, <laughs> like, I don't even, I'm not that big into Bleach, but people I know who are big into Bleach, I'm like, who's that guy? And they're like, oh, he mostly just stands around in the background. He had his own story arc. But now and I'm like, then why does he stand around in the background all the time? He's the, he's the Duke Devlin of the show. I don't get that reference. Duke Devlin is a character in Yu-Gi-Oh!, Oh. He plays Dungeon Dice Monsters with Yugi once, and then for the rest of the manga just hangs out. Like Is he's the guy in... with the point, the hair that comes to a point in the front. What? Like he's got short hair, and it like comes. He's, to he's got it in a ponytail. Oh no, it's not the guy. And he has an earring that's dice, and he's in. He's present for every major event, but he does not do a single thing after Dungeon Dice. But he just hangs out. That's his whole Damn. thing. The Duke Devlin. That's a that's a deep cut for me. I mean, it's not as deep as the Golden Girls, but um, I appreciate the content and look forward to you two talking about build. All the best, presumptuous self nicknamer Swirly Jiffy. Okie dokie. Our last email of the night is from uh, James, who writes, "Hello again, RCR. Me again after a hiatus. AKA, I was too lazy and tired to write. Mm. The end game is upon us, and it's sad to see the show ending. But with hopefully." Hopefully, Build fills the hope in my Kokoro. First question. What emotion did you guys feel when Level 1 came back? To me, I felt great joy to see these guys back after a long absence. I I felt good. Level 1 grew on me. I liked it. It was nice to see it back. I was like... I thought it was really clever. I felt like I was impressed with the writer for that. Yeah. Little, that they said... You can think about it as they set this up in the very first episode when Poppy is explaining how to use the form. And they left it on the back burner after a while and brought it back, which is really impressive for a writer to sit on that for that long. And honestly, when Game Deus and uh, Kronos fused together, I did not think for a second. No, that I didn't either. Bring this thing. And it makes perfect sense. It's perfectly set up. It was so clever. I loved it. Um, second, and this is a dumb one, has XA been more enjoyable than Ghost? I believe the answer is obvious. I also believe it's obvious. I think Ghost was more fun to talk about. Because Ghost was more... F- we didn't even talk about Ghost. We commiserated about it. <laughs> I remember there was one episode at least. I, I don't... I, I There was at least one episode of Rider Club Radio where we hit the 40 minute mark just complaining about Ghost. And yeah, hadn't touched I mean, news. We, we usually make it to 20 minutes talking about X A. Yeah, usually it's roughly twenty minutes, but we had so much to say about Ghost. I think that was the episode that ended up being an hour and a half long, or whatever. Yeah, hour and forty-five, like, something like that. Um, 
thirdly, he suggests that uh, we watch Blade or Double so Liam can finally watch them, but I've watched both of those already. Yeah, I'd probably just be watching those on my own. Yeah. And I I'm mean, putting maybe, off, maybe off, we'll do it. Yeah, I'm putting off Double as long as possible because it pisses people off when they find that I haven't seen it. So, Liam loves making people angry. <laughs> it is his favorite thing Lastly, non-writer question this time. Since you guys talked about original the character being in the next Sonic game, how do you feel about the new villain being the closest thing for Cold Steel the Hedgehog being canon? Mm. Have you seen that? I've seen pictures. Uh, he is faster than Sonic. Is he? He can teleport behind you. <laughs> uh, he says outright, My, you can call me infinite, for the last few minutes of your feeble, pathetic life. And he is Cold Steel the Hedgehog. How? He's not a hedgehog, though, so I guess he's got that going He's Cold Steel the whatever. How, after Colors and after Generations, have they not gotten it yet? How? Maybe maybe he turns out to be a parody, but like if you watch the trailer, there's like some fucking My Chemical Romance ass Reliant <laughs> K shit playing throughout the whole trailer. I don't get how Sonic is apparently this, or at least 3D Sonic is like this uncrackable formula that just cannot know. be done. I it's it's like. Mario made the switch from 2D to 3D, like, perfectly. But, like, it's bewildering, because, like, there are decent 3D Sonic games. I really yeah, thoroughly enjoy Generations, just, but, like... Just do Generations. Do gener like, fuck, I'd settle for Adventure at this point. Do something. Just pick something and go with it, is but the thing. Forces but they seems, just keep jumping around. It seems unfocused, and seems like the story takes itself way too seriously, to the point of hilarity. And, Apparently, uh, like, the Sonic Boom cartoon, I've never watched it, but people tell me it's, like, actually, like, legit funny. It is funny. I've seen it. And it has, like, really fun storylines and stuff to it. Just do that as a game. Like, the Sonic Boom game didn't have the same writers, and people say it was it was super unfunny and terrible. Yeah. Just do the Sonic Boom show, but as a game. There is uh, one episode of that show that is about the Sonic. Like, Sonic gets kidnapped by a Sonic fan. Oh, is that the one it. that has the painting where he, he the, the arms. makes his arms blue? Yeah, it's like a whole Or he makes episode. his arms tan, and he's like, his, your arms are supposed to be blue. He's, he's like, I just gotta fill in the arms. It's a... Uh... It's like a whole episode just about the Sonic fan base. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a show that's funny. It doesn't take itself seriously at all. At all. It's, it's very clever. Which is good. I mean, he's... Uh, I think the thing that Sonic Team doesn't really understand about Sonic... Is that he's a cartoon character? Yeah. <laughs> like, and I don't mean a cartoon character like, I don't know, like a Family Guy or a Rick and Morty or something, like adult cartoons. He is a children's cartoon character. Yeah. Like, he is supposed to look like a hedgehog in the Mickey Mouse universe. You shouldn't be making Sonic 06 where it's supposed to be all dramatic and we're, we're danger I feel like we're dangerously close to that with forces in terms of like writing. Yeah, the story looks like it for sure. It rem it does remind me of 06 especially because the villain Infinite looks like the like crystalline Sonic uh Mephilus, crystalline shadow was his name? Yeah. Mephilus. Yeah. Mephilus. It reminds me of him so much. Yeah. It's it's awful. I guess I guess we'll see and by we I mean you guys cuz I'm not buying that I'm shit. I'm probably not going to buy it either. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic uh Sonic Mania is super dope though. I really suggest it. Here's what's probably going to happen is Sonic Mania came out, right? Everyone loves it. It's selling mm -hmm. well. Uh, Sonic Forces is going to come out, probably not going to be met with the same critical reception. Probably and hopefully not. that will cause Sega to smack themselves in the face a little bit and re-examine themselves just a tad for fuck's sake. See, I don't know because like Sonic Heroes and shit was coming out. Sonic Heroes to Sonic 06 and beyond that stretch. And they were making Sonic Advance games. Oh, that's true. And Sonic Advance games were getting like 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10. They're decent games, yeah. Yeah, they're really fun games. And Sonic Team was like, ah, it's just handheld shit. <laughs> Sonic just works better in 2D. Yeah, it's not that he can't work in 3D, but his... I don't no, know, he just... has worked in 3D before. Yeah. 
it's just that I don't know. It's just it seems like it's it must be easier to make a two D Sonic game with that kind of momentum. It's yeah. like you, you have one less dimension to work with. It's a little more simple. But I don't know. Fuck it. Maybe in the future we'll have maybe maybe forces will come out and dazzle us and be amazing. But doubt it. I'm forces not, I'm not holding, my, like, holding my breath. Forces seems to be like the Sonic 06 team came back and was like, fucking... We'll give you one more chance. We'll make a Sonic Generations (laughs) with our storyline. That's a a bad combo. Imagine if they just made Generations 2 and just took different levels to be the the featured levels. That'd be nice. Yeah. Same sort of like fuck story. Imagine if they just made a Sonic game, right? (laughs) Just like a Sonic 3D game. And it just had its own Sonic-style story. Like, Dr. Robotnik's gonna fucking... His plan is now to dig to the center of the earth and use the molten core to fucking power robots. And you have to stop Ooh. him. And it'll be like a journey to the center of the earth where in the earth is actually a bunch of different colorful yeah. levels. Yeah, it's like the fucking uh, the Sonic anime, right? Where it has like the land of the sky above everything and then there's different layers below it. Yeah. And you get to go through all the layers. Yeah. Oh my god, we just made a better Sonic game than Sega. <laughs> Fucking call me. Call me Yuji Naka. <laughs> There's your one for free, Sonic team. What if they do that now? What if, if it's they, like yeah. Ghost, where they do it, but they make it like absolutely terrible, like <laughs> Satan the Hedgehog is the villain <laughs> at the end of it. <laughs> um, thanks for writing in, though. Thank you. And uh, if you'd like your email read on the air and be turned into a tangent about something very slightly related... Then you can send us an email at riderclubradio at gmail.com. Very slightly related is a very charitable description. And also, <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at Rider Club Radio for all the sickest tweets and retweets. We've been tweeting more lately, and it's been pretty good stuff. We try, yeah. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you next week. See you. Bye. <laughs> Fighting, 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 fighting